On 14th February 2019, in the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian Army was moving almost 2,500 soldiers from Jammu to Srinagar. It was a 9-hour, 345-kilometer journey. A convoy of 78 buses began their movement along the Jammu-Srinagar National Highway. The highway has been sanitized for any IED bombs before the convoy started. At 3.30 p.m., when the convoy reached Avantipura in Pulwama district, an unmarked SUV entered from a slip road. Nobody notices this. The SUV moves forward to the convoy. Then suddenly, the SUV ramps itself into one of the buses. There is a huge explosion. It was a terrorist attack with almost 100 kgs of explosives used. When the dust settled, the horrible truth unveiled itself. Almost 40 CRP of Javans have been martyred. This is the single most deadly attack carried out by terrorists on the Indian military. The attack was later claimed by jaish e Mohammed, a Pakistan-based terrorist organization. The incident, which later came to be called the Pulwama attack, sparked a national outrage. India wanted revenge. The Indian Prime Minister, along with the Defence Chief, held a secret meeting to avenge the death of their soldiers. Heavy artillery fire along the border was brought up. But this is an old idea and would backfire with heavy casualties on both sides. Surgical strikes by special forces on the ground were thought about. But the Pakistani army maintained high vigil in the border expecting the Indian army to attack. This would be very risky and hence this idea was dropped. The Indian government now came up with a bold plan. Airstrikes on terrorist camps located well within Pakistan. This plan was audacious in all respects as last time the Indian Air Force jets crossed the Pakistan border was way back in the 1971 Indo-Pak war. The airstrike might lead the conflict expanding to an all-out nuclear war. Keeping the risk aside, the Indian Air Force launched Operation Bandar. It will involve 12 Mirage 2000 jets, which are very good at air-to-ground attacks, supported by the Sukhoi 30s. The target was decided to be a massive terrorist camp located in Balakot. Balakot was 50 kilometers well within Pakistan border. The terror training camp was supposed to hold around 200 to 300 terrorists. It's perched on top of a small hill. Meanwhile, the Pakistani Air Force went on high alert. Two Saab AWACS took to the skies and started roaming the border areas. A couple of F-16s were also roaming the skies to look out for any Indian incursion. The Pakistani AWACS with a range of 350 kilometers can detect any Indian Air Force jets taking off from any of their bases near the Pakistan border. This was a major threat. If Operation Bandar is to take off, then these AWACS need to be neutralized. The Indian Air Force came up with a plan to divert the AWACS. On 26 February, four Sukhois took off from their base in southern Punjab and headed towards Jodhpur. The planes were fully loaded and moved in formation. This was quickly picked up by the Pakistani AWACS. After being airborne for some time, the four aircrafts then turned westwards towards the Pakistan border. This was done to make the Pakistani defense establishment believe that the Indian Air Force was heading towards an airstrike towards Bahawalpur. Bahawalpur was the headquarters of the jaish e Mohammed terrorist group. Bahawalpur was densely populated. Any airstrike here would cause huge collateral damage. Any civilian death would lead to unrest and turmoil all across Pakistan. Meanwhile, at 3.30 a.m., Operation Bandar commenced. 12 Mirage 2000 fighter jets along with four escort Sukhois took off from their base in Gwalior. These jets were loaded with Spice 2000 and Popoy Precision guided munitions. The GPS targets of the Balako terrorist camp is preloaded into these bombs. They headed north towards the POK. Accompanying the fighter jets was the Indian AWAC plane Netra and the Illusion 76 refueling planes. The Pakistanis meanwhile took the bait. On detection of the Sukhois near the border, Red alert was sounded. The AWACS were ordered to move to the area surrounding Bahawalpur and the F-16s were scrambled to intercept the incoming Indian Sukhois. While the Pakistanis were busy looking out for the Sukhois, the fighter jets of the actual strike group gets refueled in mid-air to enhance their range. The Pakistanis were still not aware of the impending airstrike in making. The Indian jets flew low to avoid radar and moved towards the mountains of the Himalayan range. Here the Pakistani raiders have a blind spot due to the elevation of the mountains. Just towards the northern border, the Indian jet formation turned west towards Pakistan. Tensions rose as the jets neared the LOC. 
At 3.45 p.m., the 12 Mirage 2000 jets crossed the Yellow Sea. The four Sukhois stayed back for support. The Mirages dropped the 1,000 kg Spice 2000 glide bombs, which pounded the Balakot terrace camp. The rain of bombs also hit the nearby wooded regions. After the Mirages emptied their payloads, the jets turned back home. The whole operation lasted only 21 minutes. By the time the Pakistanis found out about the attack, the IF planes were safely back in the Indian skies. The range and the devastation of the attack is a hotly debated topic. The Pakistani military, on realizing the success of the Indian Air Force attack, planned a counteroffensive. This was called Operation Sif Retort. At 9 a.m. the next day, on 27 Feb 2019, Operation Sif Retort took off with four Mirages and two JF-17 jets. They were heading to a target inside India. Another group of 12 F-16s took to the skies to distract Indian jets. The whole operation was monitored by Saab AWACS and Falcon DA-20 electronics warfare aircraft. The Indians were expecting a counter-attack but could not figure out the actual target. The Pakistani bomber group proceeded towards its target near the Indian border. At 9.20 a.m., the Pakistani jets crossed the LOC and both the JF-17s released a 1000 kg's REK-83 bombs. The bombs were guided to the Indian Army Brigade headquarters in the Rajouri sector. A few seconds later, the Mirages dropped their H-4 glide bombs. This was targeted to an ammo depot in Nosera sector. Both the bombs missed their targets. On becoming aware of the hit by the Pakistani jets, two Sukhoi 30s and two Mirage 2000 patrol jets were rushed to intercept the incoming Pakistani formations. The Pakistani F-16s fired some AIM-120 AIM rounds, but were easily dodged by the Sukhoi 30s. Sometime after that, the Indian Air Force, for unknown reasons, dispatched a Mi-17 helicopter with a crew of 16. Meanwhile, Falcon DA-20 was emitting its powerful electromagnetic waves. Shortly afterwards, Indian Air Defense, which had orders to shoot down any unknown aircraft, fired two Spider surface-to-air missiles on their own Mi-17. The chopper was hit and all the six crewmen died. This was the most tragic event of the entire episode. Meanwhile, on the intrusion of the Pakistani jets, India dispatched five MiG-21 Bisons from Srinagar towards the F-16 formations. The Pakistani jets broke formation and a dogfight ensued. One of the MiG-21, commanded by Captain Abhinandan, was able to lock onto an F-16 and he fired his R-73 air-to-air missile. And according to the Indian Air Force, it hit the F-16 and it burst out of the skies. Meanwhile, another F-16 locked onto the MiG and fired the AIM-20 this hit the MiG and it went down. Wing Commander Abhinandan ejected from the aircraft but landed in the Pakistan side of the border. He was quickly arrested by the Pakistan Army. Both countries decided not to scale up the conflict as it would invariably lead to a nuclear war. Days following the incident, Wing Commander Abhinandan was released from captivity and he instantly became a national hero in India. Both countries awarded their brave air warriors who took part in the operations launched by their respective countries.